Um, hi. Uh, good evening. Thanks for joining us with this, you know, Security Saturday session. Uh, recently, we have seen a lot of cyber attacks in which phishing was one of the mediums that was used to deliver the target. Uh, we have also experienced phishing attacks against our colleagues inside the organization. So we have done regular sessions inside the company wherein we explain our colleagues how to identify phishing, how to mitigate it, uh, you know, in case of doubt, how to reach out to us, and, you know, how we can ensure that we don't com get compromised because of that attack. So we w decided that since you know cryptocurrency is such a risk averse target blockchain and cryptocurrencies over the last couple of years there has been significant increase in the cyber attacks after the 2017 bull run so it, it would be best if we can you know also let our users know how to fight cyber attack and how to ensure that their crypto funds are secure so that was the intention behind, you know, doing these security Saturdays. This is the first episode in a series of sessions that we intend to have. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to basically start with this session and understand whether how we can change it in a way so that you guys are able to better consume the information over here and use it to protect yourself online. Most of the advice that we give out in this session, uh, it's generic in nature, as in it doesn't apply ju just to CoinDCX, but any other crypto exchange as well. So yeah, let's start. So I, you know, a little bit of introduction about me. I handle cyber sex side of things at CoinDCX and you know, anything to do with Introducing new security features, or you know, testing out new pilots. I help out, you know, do that. Okay, let's start. So, you know, what is if you were to go to Wikipedia and you know look at the definition of phishing, you will find this answer: that phishing is a type of social engineering attack where an attacker sends a fraudulent spoofed message designed to trick a human victim into revealing sensitive information. It's a lot of you know information to consume in a single definition. So in simple, simplest term, basically, a attacker is trying to lure you to a website or a URL that they control and use your trust on that website's interface to basically get your information. It could be personal information, it could be credit card information, or it could also be, you know, installing a application or downloading an application and installing it on your system. Yeah, so a general anatomy of a phishing attack in case of emails is like this. Uh, you receive an email from an attacker claiming to, you know, be someone whom you already know or trust right or with whom you have had interaction over email or you know phone right uh, then they will you know send an email requesting some information or asking you to visit a website or you know download a software and there are some common traits that you will find across these emails. We, we will go through a couple of these sample emails during this session as well. We have a quiz at the end, which you know has different circumstances being played out, right? So, and a victim, you know, if they are not aware about how to identify these emails, they end up visiting the website or URL or downloading the software, which you know ends up compromising their system in some cases or you know attacker being able to control uh, and gain some PII or personal information related to user or card information right and then that information is used to comp further compromise the user who fell victim uh, in case of crypto industry it could be you know you receiving uh, email over telling uh, 
email or a text message over telegram saying that a new version of a particular app or a particular crypto platform is available at this url you download that uh, you visit that url download the software and you end up compromising your system right so similar example can be found across the industry uh, some of the characteristics of a phishing email that you will see is you know there is some sort of urgency in requests so people will try to create a panic the attackers will try to create a panic in you with a you know trigger to do something as well so do something because it's urgent otherwise your experience will be hampered in some way or the other right uh, the, you will find a lot of bad spelling or grammar error so this is one of the common attributes that they use to segregate a victim from a user who is aware enough to basically look at the message and, and decide whether to continue. Uh, mismatched email address information is another one. So you should always check in case of suspicious requests, the from field that you have in an email and the source email address and the name. You, you should also look at the signature line that the sender generally uses versus what was found in the email that was suspicious to you. Uh, and this is the most important information. So as long as you are not performing the action that has been requested in the email, you are protected because the actual exploit happens when you visit the link or perform the action, right? Uh, yeah, so this is the quiz I was talking about. This was designed by Google and this is intended to be used to basically identify different phishing attempts and then find them. So we'll do this quiz on this session. This has several examples, you know, that. Wait a moment, just. You don't have to provide your real email. You can create any dummy email and start with the test, right? Uh, we'll share these links at the end of the session in the description, right? So uh, let's start with this first one. This looks like an email that you receive when someone shares a Google Doc with you, right? Now, again, if you were to look at the information in this email, you should focus on this from field. You should focus on this email address and then rest of the information. Subject is also important. So in this case, we can see that we have received an email from luke.json8000 at the red gmail.com. But if you were to go and place your mouse cursor on the links that is being formed in the email, the link is http colon underscore underscore drive dash dash google.com slash luke.johnson, right? Whereas the actual Google Docs URL would be starting with drive.google.com and not drive-google.com. Again, this has the same URL, so we can mark this as a phishing. And Google will also you know, tell you after you finish one question that, oh, what was the actual vulnerability or what was supposed to be noticed by you? So you can take this test multiple times, as many times as you want. And you know, at the end of it, you should be aware about what are the aspects that should be checked before performing any suspicious, you know, in, in requests received over email or text message, right? Uh, again, this one, you have received a fax. Uh, this looks like a email that you receive when you receive a fax, right? Fax alert email of sort. So over here also, you can see that the company footer has eFax, but the domain that is present in the email is eFACKS. That's a different email. This is one uh, suspicious info. Another is, again, if you were to go to the link and just hover, don't click, all right? Uh, you will see that the link is efax.hosting.com dot mail are you 382.co slash efax delivery slash 2017 and rest of the string right uh, so in this case again the actual domain on under which this resource is hosted is mail are you 382.com 
and not efax.hosting.com. So this again is a suspicious email, both the source email and the link that is being found. So you can again mark it as phishing. Uh, and again, Google is telling us that efax.com, which is misspelled, it should have been efax.com, right? And the link that is being found is mailru382.co. Uh, another email, you know, this looks like an email that you receive when someone shares an image over Google Photos, right? Or over email, right? So if you were to go to the email address, it's some random at the rate gmail.com, random string at the rate gmail.com. Uh, the link that is being formed is again drive.google.com dot download dash photo dot sites dot net. So basically, this is a five or six level subdomain hosted inside sites.net and the actual URL is sites.net and not drive.google.com. So again, this is a phishing email, right? And again, Google is telling us that the sites.net is the site disguised URL, right? Uh, uh, this is another one, right? Uh, let's say you use Dropbox and you receive an email from Dropbox about you know you, your being able to use all the storage capacity that you had purchased, right? So in this case, the email is coming from dropboxmail.com, which is legitimate domain, right? The emails received from Dropbox generally comes from this domain. Uh, if you were to go to the URL inside this email, you will see that the links being formed is uh, www.dropbox.com slash buy. Again, www.dropbox.com slash help slash space slash get more space, right? So these are both these resources are hosted under dropbox.com domain, which is the legit domain. And the last one again is dropbox.com slash business, which is the legit domain. So we can we don't have any suspicious reason. We can say that this email is a legit email and we will mark it as such. And then again, Google will say that this is the correct response, right? And again, dropboxmail.com is the legit domain. Uh, and links are legit, all right. Uh, here is another one. You Let's say you have received a new email from one of these schools, right? Uh, this email also has attachment. So you should always be extra careful with attachments, right? When you receive the attachments, because in such cases, there are circumstances wherein the operating systems that you use may have some open vulnerability, recent vulnerability, zero days that has been found. And people are, or the attackers are trying to compromise your system by basically executing uh, executable masked as a PDF or some other useful file, but which actually has malicious code embedded in it, right? So in this case, you can see that the email is westmountdaysschool.org, right? But the email that you are expecting from is Sharon.mosley at the westmontschool.org and not montdaysschool.org. So again, this is a malicious email. When you do receive these attachments, don't download or click on these attachments. Right? Although Google also ensures some level of protection, I have not had much experience with uh, other email service providers apart from Google and ProtonMail. They, they have done good work. Uh, sorry, this will, yeah. So again, domain. Google will also tell you that PDFs are scary in suspicious email. Ha, huh, this is another example, right? So remember we were discussing the fact that they want to create an urgency in you or a moment of panic in you? Subjects like these, right? Someone has your password. Hi, someone just try to, uh, and again, if you were to go visit the link, you will see that the link is myaccount.google.com dash security settings page dot ml dash security dot org and not google.com. So this is a phishing email. Uh, there is another website, have I been pawned? They have done great work with 
collecting data exposed in data breaches and then helping out users being able to identify whether they have been a victim of data breach. So they have also released this uh, way of checking whether a password that you use is has already been leaked in one of the data breaches or not. You should go and check that out. Uh, so again, this is a phishing email, right? Google.support, this was another red flag instead of google.com or gmail.com. Uh, this is another email over here. Again, the email domain is google.support and not google.com. So it's a phishing email. Link again is tinyurl.com. Right? Uh, this is a OAuth flow when you do decide to do, a, you know, sign in with Google or sign up with Google, right? Uh, in this case, the application is tripit, and you know the links that is being found is tripit.com and privacy policy again tripit.com. Your my accounts page is security.google.com, which is the right link. So you can say that this is a genuine email, right? Uh, yeah. So th this was the quiz that. I would recommend you all to also give it a try. Uh, this had multiple examples and ways of identifying the phishing attempt, right? Uh, you don't ha have to worry about the scores or anything. Just do it in a way that you are comfortable with identifying any phishing. Uh, on our platform also, we have introduced a couple of measures to fight or mitigate phishing. Uh, one is the security image that you can already see. So if you were to go to, let's say, login page and check for uh, email, uh, you have this image, right? And you can set this image for your account by going to account security tab in under profile section, right? And look for security image. So whenever you are entering credentials or making any account access re related changes, you should always look for this URL, right? Coindcx.com. Even our emails, you know, any emails originating from our side will have only this URL as the main domain, right? Coindcx.com. And you can also check the image that you see versus the image that you had selected when you, you had enabled security image for your account. We are also building another feature called anti-phishing code, uh, which will be available to our users in next couple of weeks. Uh, this code will, again, verify the legitimacy of emails that has been received from Point DCF. So you can set this code under your account and you know going forward any email received from our side will have that code inside it so you can be sure that the if the code is correct and it's there then it's an email coming from coin dcx always pay attention to the domain and the source uh, so i think that is it from my side do we have any questions that we want to take All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time.